Live from Orlando, Florida, it's theCUBE, covering .conf 18. Brought to you by Splunk. Welcome back to .conf 18, everybody. This is theCUBE, the leader in live tech coverage. I'm Dave Vellante with Stu Miniman. We're wrapping up day one and we're pleased to have Bina Kamani, who's the global head of partner ecosystem for the infrastructure segments at AWS. Bina, it's great to see you. Thanks for coming on theCUBE. Thank you for having me. You're Pleasure very welcome. To be here. It's, it's an awesome show. Everybody's talking data. We love, we love data. Yes. You guys, you know, you're the heart of, of data and transformation. Talk about your role, what does it mean to be the global head, partner ecosystems, infrastructure segments, a lot going on in your title. Yes. You're busy. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, in the infrastructure segments, we cover DevOps, security, networking, as well as cloud migration programs, different types of cloud migration programs, and we got segment leaders who really own the strategy and you know, figure out where are the be best opportunities for us to work with the partners as well as partner development managers and solution architects who drive adoption of the strategy. That's the team we have for this segment. So everybody wants to work with AWS, with maybe one or two exceptions. And, and so Splunk, obviously, you guys have gotten together and have formed an, an, an alliance. I think AWS has you know, blessed a lot of the Splunk technology, vice versa. Um, what's the partnership like? How has it evolved? So Splunk has been an excellent partner. We have really joined hands together in many fronts. Uh, they are fantastic AWS marketplace partner. We have many integrations of Splunk and AWS services, whether it is Kinesis Data, Firehose, or you know, um, uh, Messy, or WAF. So many services, Splunk and AWS, really are well integrated together, they work together. In addition, we have joined go-to-market programs, we have field engagement, we have demand generation campaigns. We join hands together to make sure that our customers, joint customers, are really getting best value out of it. So speaking of partnership, we recently launched migration program for getting Splunk on-prem, you know, Splunk Enterprise customers to Splunk Cloud uh, while you know they are on their journey to All cloud right. anyway. Yeah, you know, let, let's dig into that some. Uh, we know AWS loves talking about migrations. You know, we dig into all the, the uh, databases that are, that are going, and when we talk at this conference, uh, you know, we talked that you know Splunk started out very much on premises, but we've talked to lots of users that are using the cloud, and it's always that right. How much do they migrate? How much do they start there? Yeah. Bring us inside. You know, what led to this, and what what, what are the workings of it? So what, you know. Uh, if you look at the common problems people, have, customers have on-prem, they are same problem that customers have with Splunk Enterprise on-prem, which is you know they are looking for resiliency. They, their administrator goes on vacation. They want to keep it up and running all the time. They have people making some changes that shouldn't have been made. They want the experts to run their infrastructure. So Splunk Cloud is run by Splunk, which is you know they are the best at running that. Also, you know, I just heard a, a term called lottery proof. So Splunk Cloud is lottery proof. What that means, that funny thing is that, you know, your administrator wins lottery, you're not out of business. <laughs> at the same time, if you look at the, you know, the time to value. I was talking to a customer last night over the dinner and they were saying that if they wanted to get on Splunk Enterprise for their volume of data that they needed to be ingested in Splunk, it would take them six months to just get the hardware in place. With Splunk Cloud, they were running in 15 minutes. So just the time to value is very important. Other things, you know, you don't need to plan for your peak performance. You can stretch it, you can get all the advantages of scalability, flexibility, security, everything you need, as well as running Splunk Cloud, you know, you are truly cost optimized. Also, Splunk Cloud is built for AWS, so it's really cost optimized in terms of infrastructure cost as well as the Splunk licensing cost. Yeah, it, it, it's funny, you mentioned the joke, uh, you know, you go to Splunk Cloud, you're not out of, uh, out of a job. I mean, what we've heard, the Splunk admins are in such high demand. Yes. Uh, kind of running their instances probably isn't a you know, major, uh, major thing that they want to be worrying about. Yes, yes. So, yeah. Oh, please, no. Please, go ahead. So Splunk administrators are in such a high demand, and because of that, you know, uh, not only that customers are struggling with having the right administrators in place, also retaining them. 
and when they go to cloud, you know, this is a SaaS version, they don't need administrator, nor they need hardware. They can just trust their experts who are really good at doing that. So migrations are a tricky thing, and I wonder if we can get us some examples, because it's like moving a house, right? Yes. You don't, you don't want to move, or you actually do want to move, but it's, you have to be planful, it's, it's a bit of a pain, but the benefits, you know, new life, or, so yes. in your world, you got to be better. Yes. So the, the, the world that you just described of Elastic, you don't have to you know, plan for peaks, the performance, the cost, CapEx, the OpEx, all that stuff, it's 10X better. Yes. No, no debate there. But still, there's a barrier that you have to go through. Yes. So how does AWS make it easier? Maybe you could give us some examples of successful migrations and the business impact that you saw. Definitely. So like you said, right, migration is a journey. And it, it not, it's not always easy one. So I'll talk about different kinds of migration, but let me talk about Splunk migration first. So Splunk migration, unlike many other migration, is actually fairly easy, because the Splunk data is transient data, so customers can just you know, point all their data sources to Splunk Cloud instead of Splunk Enterprise, and it will start pumping data into Splunk Cloud, which is productive from day one. Now, if some customers want to retain 60 to 90 days data, then they can you know, run this Splunk Enterprise on-prem for 60 more days, and then they can move on to Splunk Cloud. So in this case, there was no actual data migration involved. And because this is a log data that people want to see only for 60 to 90 days, and then it's not valuable anymore, they don't really need to do large migration in this case. It's practically just you know, configure your data sources and you are done. That's the simplest part of the migration, which is Splunk migration to Splunk Cloud. Let's talk about different migrations. So, we have, you have heard many customers, you know, like Capital One, uh, or many others, Dow Jones, they're saying that we are going all in on AWS, and they are shutting down their data centers, they are, uh, you know, migrating hundreds of thousands of applications and servers, which is not as simple as Splunk Cloud, right? So, what AWS, you know, AWS does this day in, day out, so we have, figured it out again and again and again. In all of our customer interactions and migrations, we are acquiring ton of knowledge that we have built into our migration programs. We want to make sure that our customers are not reinventing the wheel every time. So we have migration programs like Migration Acceleration Program, which is focused on large scale migrations for, you know, for larger customers. We have partner migration programs, which is entirely focused on working with SI partners, consulting partners to you know, lead the migrations. Yeah, as well as we have workload migration program where we are standardizing migrations of standard applications like Splunk or you know, Atlassian or many other such standard applications, how we can provide kind of easy button to migrate. Now, when customers are going through this migration journey, you know, it's going to be 10x better like you said, but initially there is a hump. They are, they are probably needing to run two parallel environments. There is a cost element to that. They are also optimizing their business processes. There is some delay there. They are doing some technical work, you know, discovery, prioritization, landing zone creation, security, and networking aspects. There are many elements to this. What we try to do is, you know, so they are, if you look at the graph, you know, their uh, cost is right now at this, and it's going to go down, but before that it goes up and then goes down. So what we try to do is really provide all the resources to take that hump out in terms of technical support, technical enablement, you know, partner support, uh, funding elements, marketing. There are all types of elements, as well as a lot of technical integrations and quick starts to make it, take that hump out and make it really easy for our customers. Yeah, that's, I mean, that's, that was our experience. We're an Amazon customer, and we went through a migration about, I don't know, five or six years ago. We, we had, we had you know, server racks in a cage, and we were you know, moving wires over, and you'd get an alert, you'd have to go down and fix things, and so it took us some time to get there, but it is 10x better now. The, it is. The developers were so excited, and I wanted to ask you about sort of the DevOps piece of it, because that's really, it became, we just completely eliminated all the operational pieces of it and integrated it and let the developers take care of it. Became, truly became infrastructure as code. So the DevOps culture has per, per, permeated our small organization. Can't imagine the impact on a, on a larger company. I wonder if you could talk about that a little bit. Definitely. So, 
as customers are going through this cloud migration journey, they are looking at their entire landscape of application and they are discovering things that they never did. When they discover, they are trying to figure out, you know, uh, should I go ahead and migrate everything to AWS right now or should I refactor and you know optimize some of my applications and there I, I'm seeing both types of decisions where some customers are taking you know most of their applications uh, shifting it to cloud and then pausing and thinking now it is phase two where I am on cloud I want to take advantage of the best of the breed innovative technology is there and I want to transform my applications and I want to really be more agile at the same time, there are customers who are saying that I'm going to discover all my workload and applications, and I'm going to prioritize a set of small set of applications which we are going to take through transformation right now. And for the rest of it, we will lift and shift, and then we will transform. But as they go through this transformation, you know, they are uh, changing the way they do business. They are changing the way they are utilizing different technology. They are, their core focus is on how do I really compete with my competition in the industry, and for that, how can IT you know, provide me that agility that I need to roll out changes in my business day in, day out. And for that, you know, Lambda, entire code portfolio, you know, code build, code commit, you know, code deploy, as well as cloud trail and you know, all the things that, all the services we have as well as our partners have, they provide them truly that edge on their industry and market. You know, how has the security discussion changed? When Stu and I were at the AWS Public Sector Summit in June, the CIO, the CIA, stood up on stage in front of 10,000 people and said, the cloud on my worst day from a security perspective is better than my client server infrastructure on a best day. That's quite an endorsement from the CIA. Yes. We've got some chops in security. How has that discussion changed? Obviously it's still fundamental, critical, it's something that you guys emphasize, but how has the perception and reality changed over the last five years? Cloud is, you know, security in cloud is a shared responsibility. So Amazon is really, really good at providing all the very, very secure infrastructure. At the same time, we are also really good at providing customers and business partners all the tools and hand-holding them so that they can make their application secure. Like you said, you know, uh, AWS, many of the even analysts are saying that AWS is far more secure than anything they can have within their own data center. And as you can see that in this journey also, customers are not now thinking about is it secure or not. We are seeing the conversation that, you know, uh, how in fact, speaking of Splunk, right, one customer that I talked to, he was saying that, I was asking them why did you choose Splunk Cloud on AWS, and his take was that I wanted near instantaneous SOC compliant and by moving to Splunk Cloud on AWS, I got that right away. Even I'm talking to public sector customers, they are saying, you know, I want FedRAMP, I want, you know, uh, in healthcare industry, I want HIPAA compliance, everywhere we are seeing that. Uh, we are able to keep up with security and compliance requirements much faster than what customers can do on their own. So they, so you take care of, certainly from the infrastructure standpoint, those uh, uh, certifications, and that piece of the compliance, so the customer can worry about maybe some of the things that you don't cover, maybe some of their business processes and other documentation, ITIL stuff that they have to do, whatever, but now they have more time to do that, presumably, because that's checkbox, AWS has that covered for me, right? Is that the right thinking? Uh, yes, plus we provide them all the tools and support and knowledge and everything, so that they, and even partner support, who are really good at it, so that not only uh, uh, they understand their, that the application and infrastructure will come together as an entire secure environment, but also they have everything they need to be able to make applications secure. And Splunk Hi. is another great example, right? Splunk helps customer yeah. get application level security and AWS is providing them infrastructure and together we are working together to make sure our customer's application and infrastructure together are secure. So speaking of mig migrations, database a hot topic at a high level uh, anyway. I wonder if you could talk about database migrations. Andy Jassy obviously talks a lot about, you know, well, let's see, we saw RDS on-prem at VMworld, big announcement, um, certainly Aurora, yes. you know, DynamoDB is one of the databases we use, um, Redshift, obviously. How is our database migrations going? What are you doing to make those easier? So, uh, what we do, in a nutshell, right, for everything, we try to 
build a programmatic, repeatable, scalable approach. That's what Amazon does. And what we do is that for each of these, you know, standard migrations for databases, we try to figure out, you know, that let's take few examples and let's figure out playbooks, let's figure out runbooks, let's make sure technical integrations are in place. We have quick starts in place. We have consulting partners who are really good at doing this again and again and again. And we have all the knowledge built into tools and services and support so that whenever customers want to do it, they don't run into hiccups and they have a really pleasant experience. Excellent. Well, I know you're super busy. Thanks for making some time to come on theCUBE. I always love to have AWS on. So thanks for your time, Bina. Thank you, very nice to meet you both. All right, you're very welcome. All right, so that's a wrap for day one here uh, at Splunk Conf 2018. Stu and I will be back tomorrow. Day two, more customers. We got the senior executives coming on tomorrow. Of course, Doug Merritt, we're always excited to see to see Doug, go to siliconangle.com, you'll see all the news, thecube.net is where all these videos live, and wikibon.com for all the research. We're out, day one, Splunk, you're watching theCUBE, we'll see you tomorrow, thanks for watching. Thank you.